Hi there. Today we're going to talk about lighting inside of Maya. So here's my character. This is Rigby. Hi, Rigby. And typically in the past, we've used an Arnold light called Skydome. So I can go to Arnold, down to Lights, and press Skydome. So super quick, this light is casting light from all directions. And we're going to render this. I have a plane. Uh, on the ground and a plane in the back for the backdrop just to catch some of these shadows and let's take a look So this is the render it's not terrible. It was super quick to set up But it's not that great um, White background everything's kind of bland. It's equally lit from all sides But if I'm really trying to show off my model, this might not necessarily be the best approach So let's take a look at an alternative so in 3D, most things that we do are, um, they came from traditional mediums. So when we animate, right, the foundations come from hand-drawn 2D animation back in the old days. Same thing with digital sculpting. Um, they take the foundations of traditional sculpting like clay and marble, and we can do it digitally. Same thing with lighting. So in photography, there's something called three-point lighting. And we're going to use this in 3D as well. So if you Google three-point lighting, you'll find an image like this. This is just a rough guide. And basically it shows you we have a key light, a fill light, and a backlight. That's the three-point lighting, right? Self-explanatory. Uh, I will refer to this as the rim light, uh, but backlight or rim light, it's the same thing. So the key light, you'll notice it's brighter. It's a little bit closer. Um, this is our subject, so this could be whatever. This could be a model that you create, a weapon, character, anything. This is our fill light, a little further back, not as bright, and a backlight. So let's take a look at another example. Now this is just a rough, uh, don't like follow this to a T. You are the director. You are the animator. You get to pick, right? Whatever looks great. This will just get you um, up and running really quick. So this one, the key light is on the left-hand side. This says it's the brightest, and this also says 45 degree angle, okay? Uh, this one's a fill light. It says about half is bright, and the backlight. So we're gonna look at this in photography. This is an example of a picture that was taken with just a rim light. So remember the rim light is this backlight, and then this is one with just a key light. Okay, so the light is coming from this direction, lighting his face, but it's really dark under here. And this is a key plus that backlight or that rim light. So we can see that back here. But it's still pretty dark under his face. So another example, this is a photograph with just the key light. Remember, key light is our main light. And then we transition to a key light and a rim light, which is the backlight. And this is a key light, the rim light, and a fill light. So it's brightening, brightening up those shadows underneath. So that was key, fill, and backlight for this one. It's very appealing. We can see um, all the details of this guy's face. And here's another example. <laughs> so the key light is coming from this direction. Well, probably like right here, we can tell because of the shadow of her nose. And then we have a fill light, right, coming from this direction, brightening up some of these areas. And then the backlight, they've played and changed the color of this, right? They put a red filter on it. So that's something we could also do in 3D. So let's apply this, right? Theory, theory, theory. I love theory. But how can I use this? Hop into Maya. Here's Rigby. Instead of using the Sky Dome, we're going to get rid of it. Get out of here. And we're going to use an area light. So I'm going to go to Arnold, down to Lights, and press Area Light. I'm going to move this into position, and we're going to talk about this area light. So for starters, this red line indicates which way the light is coming. So directional light, right, it doesn't really matter where it is in your scene. What matters is the direction with that. But this guy, if any object were back here, it's not going to be lit. So let's put that right there. 
and I'm going to open up my attribute editor. So that's where all of our controls for our light is. And let's render that. See what happens. Oh my, you probably can't even see it. I can hardly see Rigby sitting there. I'm going to press this just so we can temporarily save and we can scrub through. That way we remember where we've came. Okay, so I select the light. The intensity is too low. I'm going to bump this up to 100. Re-render. Okay, that is a little better. Um, it's not in position for my key light yet, but I wanted to talk to you about the scale. So we're going to take a look at this shadow, and then we are going to scale this light up. We haven't changed any of the values over here, like the intensity. And look at the difference. Okay, so we have a big change here. So think of this as like a flashlight. Right? We can focus our beam if we were to scale this down, and when we scale it up, it's like using the flood function on your light, and it just spreads the light. We get softer shadows, and the shadows are less hard. It's kind of like an overcast day with those soft shadows. So I'm going to scale this. So don't forget you can play with the scale of your lights. And now I'm going to move this light into position for my key light. So let's look at our reference. Our reference said, hey, we need a key light. It's not directly in front of our object, slightly to the side, and it's the brightest. So back into Maya, let's do that. That other one also said, hey, it's at 45 degrees. You can be exact if you want. I am not an exact guy. Your values will be different. You might have 300 here. You might have 500. You might have a different angle. That is totally OK. So this is going to be my key light. So let's render that. <coughs> Oops, my render is a little low. That's OK. And it's still pretty dark. This might be a good time uh, to bump up that intensity before we move on to that fill light. Let's do 300 here, see how that looks. Render that bad boy again. <clears throat> Perfect. I'm loving it. Okay. Now let's do the fill light. So remember, the fill light is this light that's on the other side, and it's uh, less intense. So I'm just going to duplicate this light, Shift D as in Delta, and I can move it over. And I'm just going to go ahead and rotate this. I'm going to pull it back slightly. Uh, let's do maybe something like that. And we're going to lower that value to 100. This probably would have been a good idea for me to set up a camera. So that way I can keep everything the same. But I didn't. So we're going to re-render this. <clears throat> and we're going to press this button again. OK, that's going to keep the image. And then we can scrub through. So this was our key light. And we added a fill light. So it's brightening some of this up. That's awesome. Let's now do a rim light. Same thing. Shift D as in delta. Uh, it kept that translation and the rotation, which is kind of helpful because I am actually going to make this a little lower anyways. Too low, too low. And this is, I'm putting it on the ground just because you can put this where you want. But it's going to be on the back side, favoring this fill light. So I'm not going to put the, the rim light on this side. The key light is our main light. And let's make this one blue. So I'm going to hit blue and just bring that down a little bit. And I'm going to bump this up to 200. Let's render. <clears throat> OK. I don't like my camera angle. Let's do something like that. I also didn't like the angle of this. And let's just bump this up even more. <clears throat> uh, 
Okay, it's looking great. <clears throat> Maybe this is the effect that you want. Maybe not. It doesn't have to be blue. Uh, I'm just trying to show off my model in a more pleasing way. So we're getting somewhere. Maybe I want this one to be red. Let's just try it. All right, nice thing about digital art is that we have control Z. Woo! <clears throat> so change the color. Uh, I'm going to re-render this, maybe. What are you doing? There we go. <clears throat> okay. So, pretty cool. The You have complete control over this. The nice thing about three-point lighting is if I don't like the way it looks, right, I can change the angle. I can change the scale, the position of each of these lights. I can change the color. It gives me absolute power over the lighting, and that's what you want in the scene. With the Sky Dome, you lack some of the control, right? We can play with the intensity, we can add the HDRI, which is great for some quick results, but we can get exactly what we want with this three-point lighting. Uh, feel free to experiment. The last thing that I'm gonna do in this scene is my backdrop. I don't really like it because it shows uh, where these two planes intersect, and that's kind of dumb. I don't really care about these planes. So what I did was I just took a plane and where did it go? There it is. And I just curved it. So to do that, all I did was uh, grab, let's just go to verts. All right, it's just a game of, I just grabbed these, I moved them, I rotated and slowly went down the line to get this curve. So I just modeled this nice smooth transition. It's just going to look a lot nicer. Let's move that. Get him on the flat portion. There we go. And I can scale it this direction, right? Because I want it to fill the whole frame of this viewport. Looks good. Let's render. I'll show you why we did that. <clears throat> Okay, so before I had uh, where those two planes intersected, and it just, it's not appealing, right? I, it's distracting, I don't need it. So I just made a curved surface, so where that's gone. I still have the light hitting the ground, I have shadows, it's captured by my backdrop. This blue light is pretty distracting, so if this were a final project or something, I would adjust this light, maybe move it a little, uh, a little away from this plane, this ground. But yeah, that is just very simple three-point lighting. So, thanks for watching.